Hello, hello, good afternoon, good afternoon, and welcome, everyone. Uh, first of all, I would like to start by apologizing from yesterday because I had some issues with my um, electricity service. And uh, yeah, you know, without electricity, there's no internet sometimes because my um, my mobile um, device or my mobile, um, you know, signal wasn't the best either. Therefore, I was not capable of carrying out the class. Either my computer was ready because I didn't have um, you know, as much battery as I will have needed to complete the class. Therefore, it was not possible. But today, here we are. We are going to uh to get on going, you know, with uh with more information, with more learning. Now, the bad thing is that we're gonna have to um to recover the lesson on Friday. So yeah, we're gonna be having uh, a class on Friday. But anyway, uh, let's not see things from the back si bad side, sorry. We're gonna try to uh, to look at everything from a bright side. Uh, the good thing is that we are here once again, we are ready to continue. Uh, we are only six classes away, basically, from, from finishing up this module, which is great. Sorry. Uh, and uh, yeah, it is a pleasure. And uh, this afternoon, we are going to be talking about time, okay? About how our life has changed to some extent, how our neighborhood may have changed, and how things change over time. So we are going to talk about that. We're going to talk about, um, well, time changes. And the question for the afternoon is going to be, what changes have you seen in your life in the last five years? Okay, so how has your life changed in the last five years? Let's say, for example, that, um, well, in my case, in the last five years, I had the opportunity to go to the United States. I also graduated from 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 the university, and uh, I started. I got a job as a teacher, and now I work for English Cooperativo as a teacher as well. So those might be some of the changes that I have seen in my life in the last and in the last few years but how about you what changes what things what new adventures have you had in your life in the last five years i think this afternoon we're going to start by hearing from jorge so tell us jorge how has your life changed in the last five years como ha, como ha cambiado nuestra vida en los últimos cinco años good afternoon Good afternoon. In last five years, mm -hmm. I I has mm, changed my car. Cool. Mm, Anything else? It changed about the the department in our company mm -hmm. um, um, and study English in okay English corporativo all right so you changed your car you changed from your department at your work and you also started to learn English uh, with Corporativo. That is great. So those are some good changes and positive changes. Um, if you guys feel like you would like to mention negative changes as well, there's no problem, you know. But normally we do only talk about positive things because we feel better, you know, when we talk about uh, things that are positive in our lives. But okay, uh, let's hear now from Lorena. How about you, Lorena? What things or how has your life changed in the last uh, five years? What things are the new things in your life in the last five years? Hello there, Lorena. Se ha levantado, teacher. Oh, okay. Okay. Then how about if we get to hear from Guadalupe? How has your life changed in the last five years, Guadalupe? Good 
good afternoon, teacher. Good afternoon. In the last five years, God has bled uh, me a lot. Mm -hmm. I have been able to expand my house. Uh, he has given me a lot of work. Uh, I have been able to go at, on vacation, Belize, uh, Mexico. Oh, wow. Very good. Uh, so you have had a lot of blessings. Uh, you have gotten more work. You have gotten to go on vacation. So very cool. Those are very nice things, you know, that happen to one in in uh, a period like that in five years. That's great. Very, very good. All right. Uh, now, let's hear maybe from uh, Alberto. What would you say, Alberto? How has your life changed in the last five years? What are things that are different now from you uh, five years ago? Excuse me, teacher. I don't listen. Can you replace, please? Yes. Uh, so the question for today is, how has your life changed in the last five years? Like, ¿qué cosas son las cosas nuevas que hemos hecho en los últimos cinco años? I, in my case, I study in the university. Mm -hmm. mm, I chase my job. Mm -hmm. And... Okay. Mm -hmm. So you started uh, studying at the university and you changed your job. Well, those are also, you know, nice steps to take in a five uh, year period. So good. Very good. You know, uh, moving forward, growing as a person is always important. So nice. Um, how hey, about? Sure. Yes. Ya estoy aquí, perdón. Ah. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, Lorena, entonces, in your case, tell me, how has your life changed in the last five years? What are the things that are different now from you five years ago? Como pueda. Yes, 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 yes. Um, Give it your my, right. My life has changed. O sea, change, como cambio, change. ¿verdad? Uh -huh, changed. Changed. Okay, my life have changed a lot uh, because I um, feel that I have learned mm -hmm. more about life and I have become stronger. O hijos, como era que me decían. Children. Okay, sí, to, be, to overcome adversity, the adversidades, que no mm -hmm. sé cómo se pronuncia. Yeah, adversity. With good help. All right, very good. So that's great. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, you know, it, as I mentioned before, in a, in a five-year period of time, many things can happen. And uh, as many things can go right, many things could also go wrong. But... Yeah, the good thing is that if we look at things from the bright point, from, from um, you know, a positive viewpoint, we are going to get to um, to some nice results. So, very nice. Uh, now, how about if we hear from Erika, from Glenda? Tell us, how has your life changed in the last five years, Glenda? Hi, teacher. Um, um started English class, mm -hmm. traveled to Guatemala and Honduras, went to, com ¿cómo se dice competir? Compete. Went to compete in trail running race. Mm -hmm. um, start uh it's more, more healthy uh, como? healthy uh, ex ex exactly okay great very good yes. Yes. so uh great you know uh going on vacation or i don't know if it was on vacation but visiting new places going to new places is always welcoming one's life and uh also the fact that I mean, you start taking care of yourself a little better. You also started new things like learning English. 
those projects in life are great. And when we look at ourselves in a five time, I mean, in five years uh, period, sometimes we don't realize how much we have grown. Uh, but yeah, sometimes when you have the opportunity, you know, to remember the things you have done, you can even amuse yourself. You can even get surprised and see that um, you have actually done a lot in the last five years. So very good. That is very, very good. Uh, how about now we hear from Gustavo? In your case, Gustavo, what things have changed in the last five years for you? How was your life five years ago? Gustavito, le están preguntando. Sorry, sorry, teacher. What is the question? How was your life um, five years ago? Like, uh, what are the things that have changed in the last five years for you? Uh, in the, ¿cómo se dice ámbito? Uh, environment. In environment, uh, uh, in family or? In general. It can be. In general. In, uh, yeah, in general. Uh, I change. Mm. Mm. Um, bastante. A lot, or yeah, I changed many a lot. things. Yes, a lot. Uh, I take a, a family. Uh, I, I take uh, my my baby. Okay. Mm, my business. Um, ha ido incremento o ha crecido? Yeah, has In grown. It sería dos formas. Por uh -huh. ejemplo, cuando hablamos de business, o sea, okay. es en sí el negocio, el hecho de hacer negocio con alguien, ahí se podría utilizar la palabra increase. Pero si hablo increase. acerca de mi negocio como la propiedad mi, o mi, 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 mi propia idea, en ese caso sería grow, porque es como que lo he crecido, ¿verdad? Entonces mm -hmm. sería grow. Entonces, so my business grow. has grown. It's grow. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Well, I think, man. okay, yeah, mm -hmm. I think we can leave it at that. So very good. You see I mean, many things, many positive things. Uh, you see that you got married, you had, you started a family, you got a child, and then your business is also doing good. So many things can happen in five years. Now, this is also, as I mentioned before, a good opportunity for us to remember, you know, how things used to be and also to establish possibly um new desires new how can we say it um new adventures we can start new things from now on because five years ago you didn't have what you have now but maybe if you think about it or if you start um pushing into new goals you can get to new places in five years from now now the last person that i'm going to be asking this afternoon is going to be um carlos so tell me carlos how was your life five years ago? Like what things have been changed for in your life in the last five years? The last year. Last five years. Last five years. Change. Uh, I. I but and my house, my mother, and I am practicing mountain bike. Mm -hmm. Study English. Okay. <laughs> so there are so many that you cannot even remember. Son tantas cosas, ¿verdad? Que ni se acuerda uno. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but yeah, also, you see, uh, getting a mountain bike is an adventure, I'll say, because now you have the chance to, like, um, do some workouts, doing something different, 
not only um, practicing the same thing, you know, as, as regular. So, yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's great. It's very different because it's, yeah. Uh, how do you say adrenaline? Adrenaline. Adrenaline. When you down the mountain, uh -huh. uh, I go to the beach, it's different, different. Yeah, very good. Uh, do you ever, do you live close or do you live very far from your job? Uh, I live in Mexicano. Oh, the okay. <laughs> yeah. Cause... I need one hour for the Mexicano uh, Oh, wow. Yeah, that's a lot. Because the other day I saw a guy who lives in Comalapa and I mean, it was a TikTok, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it was um you know accurate but he lives in Comalapa no 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 it's not Comalapa no 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 San Marcos San Marcos so he's supposed to live in San Marcos and he rode his bike all the way to El Salvador del Mundo like he said that it was better to go by bike than by car because by bike he was able to um to get you know to his work um faster because I, I, there was something that I have never really seen happening and it's people riding a bike through uh, Paso El Jaguar because he, he even t record himself, you know, going on his bike through Paso El Jaguar. That's something that, I mean, as I said, I have never seen it. But if people do it, well, they are brave because that place right there, it got really stuffed uh, in the morning. And I think it's very dangerous. But you see, some people, just in order to avoid uh, the heavy traffic, they just prefer to go by bike. But... Yeah, for Mexicanos, I think it will be too far. Yeah. yeah. San Miguel is very traffic. Is many, many traffic. San Miguel, only downtown San Miguel. Like to get to San Miguel is not that difficult. Um, but in downtown, like near to the the Parque Guzman. Yeah, the Roosevelt Avenue, that's it's not too bad though. I mean, it is heavy. But it's heavy because of the of the traffic lights. But it is not something that is like horrible to go there. You know, sometimes maybe mo mostly when there's like the carnival close to that time, it is very tough. But in like regular days, it's not really that bad. I mean, you can go through San Miguel in like what, twenty minutes. So it's not yeah. like a horrible experience. Uh, but yeah, I have been in San Salvador when, I mean, in, in some regular days when I think like, yeah, it's not going to be too bad. And then it turns into something very, very bad. However, the traffic here in El Salvador, I think it's nowhere close from the horrible experience that it is being stuck in traffic in Guatemala because there, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, Guatemala is just a special on that thing because sometimes... Yes. Traffic, I mean, you can be stopped in the same position up to an hour because it happened to me once. I was at the same and at the same place for one hour. And it was like, I, I mean, it was unbe unbelievable because I, I didn't think it was even possible that traffic could get that, that bad. But yeah, so uh, I think my worst experience with traffic has been that one in Guatemala. Because, for example, in California, you see that there is a lot of traffic when you see movies or news. You see that there is a lot of traffic in, in California. But uh, that's mostly between 4 p.m. and 8 p.m. But after those hours, there was one experience that I had one day. And, uh, well, my cousin, he's a truck driver. So, you know, they sometimes they start try start driving at what? Maybe, well, you know, you guys know about that. Uh, they start driving at what? At 2 a.m. So, and they have to have all the papers and everything ready. And one time, my cousin forgot something at home. And he called his dad and he was like, hey, dad, can you bring me the stuff? And it was around 2.15 p.m. And I remember when we got on the freeway, that freeway was normally heavy on traffic. That day, it was so lonely. Like, it was just empty. And uh, it was just so cool, you know, an experience that I never thought I was going to have. Because I every single day when I saw that freeway, it was just heavy and heavy traffic. But that day, it was great. It was a great experience. And um, I can also imagine how it feels, you know, driving through San Salvador when there is no traffic. Yeah. But yeah, in regular days, it is just a very bad thing. Anyway, so um, let's 
Oh, no, perdón. Antes que nada, para, ya que comentábamos acerca de San Miguel, bueno, San Miguel no es tan horrible, en donde sí a veces se pone horrible, que ni parece, porque ni es tan grande eh, el centro, es en Usulután. Usulután, sí, eh, cuando vengan ustedes a este lado y tengan chance de irse por el bypass, mejor usen el bypass, porque o sea, en Usulután sí Santa se Rosa pone. De Lima también. ¿Mm? Santa Rosa de Lima también. Mm. Se pone heavy. Pero en Santa Rosa es porque las calles son angostitas. En Santa Rosa es el problema, que cuesta mucho pasar porque lo, se parquea un carro y al otro cuesta que pase. A veces un camión se queda atravesado. En Santa, en Santa Rosa, más que todo, es también por el, el comercio, que es muy activo en cuanto lo, al, al comercio. Entonces cuesta por eso. Pero en Usulután es la gente que es bien, de su, bien no sé, maleducada. O sea, en mi caso, yo como conozco bien Usulután, me meto por, por calles ahí a, a, alternas, ¿verdad? Por todos lados. Y ni siquiera es tan grande. Pero si uno se mete a la calle principal, es horrible pasar a veces. Más que todo así al mediodía, a veces como a esto de las 2 de la tarde. Es horrible por el calor, porque Usulután, honestamente, creo que es el lugar más caliente aquí en el país. Porque yo he estado en la Unión y nunca he sentido un calor tan horrible como se siente en Usulután. Pero ya, yeah. bueno. So, this afternoon, we're going to be talking about time, as I said. We have this conversation that we're going to be practicing. I'm going to make it a little bit larger because right now it's a little bit too big, too, I mean, too small. Um, let's see. So this conversation, we have two people being part of it. Now, the topic is this neighborhood has changed. As your life changes, you can also identify some changes in your neighborhood. Because in my case, for example... Um, five years ago, well, not in my neighborhood. My neighborhood hasn't really changed that much, that much, but at least in my city, five years ago, there were not as many clinics and as many hospitals as we have now. My uh, city was more known for having, um, how how can we call them, hardware hardware stores, yeah, like ferreterias. So that was the thing that we had a lot of. We I mean, there is like 10 or, or 15 here in El Transito. And I mean, we're just, you know, a small town. We're not like a big city. But for us, I mean, I, I will say that that's a lot of, um, you know, hardware stores. But nowadays, what is basically raging and it's getting bigger and bigger of an industry here in, in my city is hospitals and clinics and also laboratories. There are many places like that. For example, they just built a four stories building for a hospital. And uh, yeah, there, I mean, most of the construction, construction sites that you see here in El Transito are designed or are planned to become hospitals at one point. Um, so yeah, that's something that has changed in the last five years. What else has changed in my city? Um, because Super Selectos, it was there already. Oh yeah, the park. The park was renewed, and it was around four years ago. So we got a new park, and like that, in in your city, in your neighborhood, in your town, you can start identifying how some things are changing. For example, a new neighbor just came by, and probably they turned down the house that was there, and now they are building, you know, a, a bigger house. So those are things that can also change um around us now for this conversation we have uh, two people being part of it those two people are going to be uh matt and tanya um so the conversation should go as following uh this neighborhood should sorry this neighborhood sure has changed i know a few years ago not many people lived here but the population is growing so fast these days yeah, it seems like there's a construction site on every corner. Remember how we used to buy candy at that little grocery store? Now it's a multiplex cinema. Yeah, and they're tearing down our high school. They're going to build a shopping mall. Soon, there will be just malls and parking lots. That's because everyone has a car. 50 years ago, people walked everywhere. Nowadays day drive so you see um for example right now i want to hear from you guys once again let's see what is a prediction you can make about the future like at this time in our country 
electric cars are not like a big market. It's not a big thing. I remember uh, 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 in social media, I remember how loud it was when they got the first Tesla here in, in our country. So right now, electric vehicles are not like a big thing. Do you think electric vehicles are going to be more common in five years? So I want to hear what predictions you may have. Piensen, ahorita se lo voy a decir en español para que lo, para que lo vayan pensando. Piensen en una predicción acerca de algo que ustedes crean que pueda pasar en nuestro país en los próximos cinco años. ¿Sí? Pues hablando así en el país, ¿verdad? En los próximos cinco años. So here we have, for example, a few years ago, I think public transportation was more useful because more people uh, used to ride, you know, the bus or, or, or micro bus. Nowadays, there is also a lot of people riding the bus, but there are many more cars available and people decide or uh, opt to driving more than riding. So uh, that is a change that I myself can identify in the whole country. It is that, well, public transportation is not as crowded or as busy as it used to be five years ago. Another thing that has changed, in my opinion at least, is the same thing, traffic. It has become worse in the last five years. I mean, uh, I remember uh, a while ago, or actually, to be honest, right before the pandemic, I remember it wasn't really that bad. You know, it was not like a horrible situation, um, traffic. But nowadays, it is just something just so terrible. Now, something positive that has happened in the last five years, I would say is the fact that we have turned into a more safe country, you know, into a safer country. So, yeah, that will be something positive that has happened, uh, that now we are a little bit safer. But from you, what are your predictions in the future? What are the things that are going to happen in our country? We're going to start by hearing from um, Janira. Tell me, Janira, what is a prediction? What is something you may you think that may happen? Janira siempre dice, por qué What is something that may happen in the, in the next five years. Una predicción para nuestro país en los próximos cinco años. Ah. In the country um, um, could, could have no, could has eh, es podría tener, ¿verdad? Mm -hmm. Yes, could have. Um, the ¿Cómo se dice mejor? Uh, improve. Improve. Mm -hmm. Improve. Uh, cool has uh, improve, improve uh, uh, economy. The economy. economy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Could have improved the economy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully there is something that happens in our country in the next five, year, next five years that our economy gets improved. Very good. All right. How about Rita? What would you say, Rita, is a prediction, something you think that may happen in our country in the next five years? Um, maybe when uh, this traffic, maybe, can be improve the public transportation. Okay. Okay, mm -hmm. hopefully, yeah, that will be great, you know, having improvements in public transportation so that we have less traffic, hopefully, yeah. because... Or, um, mm -hmm. or the other country, more, more home office, maybe. Mm -hmm. Also, yeah, that's a good idea, more home officing. Mm -hmm. So, very good, yeah, either of those will be great ideas for our country, you know, improving... Public transportation, so people feel safer riding the bus, so people feel safer uh, going, you know, on, on, on a public transport and uh, avoiding having as much traffic as we do nowadays. So, yeah, let's hope for the best. Let's hope that our country or our officials, um, you know, see those as good ideas. Now, how about Samuel? What do you teacher, think? Teacher, yes, 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 uh, yes, yes. excuse me. Uh... Better no es mejor también. Better es mejor en el sentido de cuando estamos haciendo una comparación. 
Sí, o sea, mejor es como cuando, cuando yo quiero comparar, por ejemplo, sí puedo decir better con lo mismo, en el mismo caso anterior, ¿verdad? Que, que mencionaba, mm -hmm. al decir uh, that the economy is better, sí, I hope that the economy is better, comparado con ahora. Pero improve mm -hmm. se refiere directamente, ¿verdad? A que algo se mejore, a raíz, qué sé yo, del trabajo. Uh, entonces, improve es cuando se hace algo para que las cosas mejoren. En cambio, better es más que todo el hecho de comparar, de decir, hoy está así, mañana está de, lo, de la otra mm. forma. O decir también, qué sé yo, mi, mi carro es así, pero este es mejor. Mm -hmm. Entonces, eh, así sería, ¿verdad? Diferente, como si, por ejemplo, yo solía manejar un carrito del 86, por decir algo, y ahora ya ando un 2004. Entonces, mis amigos me pueden decir, ah, you have improved, ¿sí? O sea, es como, has mejorado, ¿sí? Entonces, por eso se utiliza la palabra improve. Um, ya si hablaran los amigos del carro, ahí sí, ahí sí podrían decir, ah, your car is better, ¿sí? O sea, tu carro es mejor. Pero, entonces, improve se usa para hablar acerca de la mejoría que se da a raíz de algo que hacemos. En cambio, el better solo es la palabra que usamos para comparar, nada más. O sea, pero no necesariamente se refiere, ¿verdad? A lo que hemos hecho o explica nada de lo que hemos hecho, sino que solo dice que algo es mejor que lo otro. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. Sí, pero, pero sí, se podría utilizar better en el caso de querer reemplazar la palabra improve. Ok, how about Samuel? What do you think, Samuel? What, are, what is a prediction? Something you think that may happen to our country in the next five years? Mm. Para estos cinco años. Mm. Y... Que lo vea. Teacher, repito. Uh, yeah. What do you think uh, can improve or can be better in our country in the next five years? O sea, cosas que tú creas, predicciones que pueda tener para nuestro país en, el, en los próximos cinco años. ¿Qué puede ser mejor de aquí a cinco años? ¿Qué puede cambiar o mejorar? Yeah, the the traffic. The traffic. Okay. Uh, is. You know. Uh, mm -hmm. Economic. Okay. The economy. Traffic and economy. Yeah, those are two points that are very important for uh for our lives, and that uh, will be great. You know, if we can make them improve. But something that I was I was thinking, and I have been thinking for quite a while, is that I think our country is too centralized. I mean, people who live in the center of the of the country, of course, are not going to think the same. You guys, if you live close to um to the capital, you're not you're not gonna feel like the country is too centralized because you have access to the things close by. Uh, but I think something that will help a lot in a country as tiny as us as ours is decentralizing things like for example some institutions some processes are only possible to carry out in san salvador but if we had the ability to do those things in santa ana in sultan or maybe in san miguel it will be better because we will not have to travel all the, all the way there and traffic will not be that bad because to be honest just just being honest honest here with you guys I think that people who come to, to the capital from outside, from other departments, are the ones who make traffic that bad. It's not only people who live there, you know. It's us, the ones who go from here to there, the ones who make uh, the traffic go bananas. Um, because in my case, for example, I have only driven in downtown San Salvador twice. So only two times. But I think I have made some mistakes, you know. Comparing my driving to the style that people have for driving in the in San Salvador, I think my driving is too peaceful and too calm. And that, of course, is going to add to the traffic. So having all institutions, having basically uh, things being centralized only in the capital is what I think makes uh, traffic get worse there. So yeah, uh, the fact that we 
will be able to move some institutions outside of the capital, I think will help a lot with solving some of the traffical issues that we have. But still, you know, it's something we cannot decide on. It's just an opinion. Uh, but hopefully, hopefully your ideas turn true and hopefully, you know, traffic and economy, both of those get to improve because I can tell that those are the point, the, uh, the points of interest here. Now, let's talk about time contrast. En un momento vamos a regresar a eso. Oh, no, perdón, perdón, perdón. Antes de movernos de esto, I need two participants. Sí, dos de ustedes que me ayuden con la lectura de esta conversación. So just two of you, uh, please go ahead. If you, ha if you have any questions on how to pronounce any of these words, you can uh, let me know right now because after we go to cover the next topic, we're going to come back into practicing this conversation. Okay, so Janira, who is going to join Janira on practicing this conversation, people? Um, Necesito alguien más, así que ¿quién será? Matt. <laughs> Yo sería okay. Matt. Okay, y entonces no, Ivania, vamos a intentar, Ania. Ivania sería entonces Tania. Okay, Ivania and Janira, when you feel ready, you guys, you girls may start. Okay. Uh, Ivania va a ser Tania. Mm -hmm. okay. Yo sería Matt. Okay. Okay. This okay. neighborhood sure has changed. I know. A few years ago, not many people lived here, but the population is growing so fast these days. These days. Yeah. It seems like there is a construction site on every corner. Remember how we used to buy candy at that little grocery store? Now it's a multiplex cinema. Yeah. And oh. they're <laughs> and they're <laughs> tearing down our high school. They're going to build a shopping mall. Soon there will be just malls and parking lots. That's because everyone has a car. 50 years ago, people worked everywhere. No, nowadays they drive. Nowadays they drive. Nowadays. Okay, so some of the words of interest that we have here, I think, will be uh, what? Growing, maybe? When we talk about growing, ya les dije, ¿verdad? Anteriormente estábamos con lo de la pregunta. Eh, no recuerdo si fue Alberto que mencionaba acerca de un negocio. Pero, eh, when we say that something has grown... No, no era Alberto. No me acuerdo quién fue. But Gustavo. Oh, Gustavo, ok, ok. So, when we say that um, something grows, es básicamente cuando algo crece, ¿verdad? Entonces... Uh, the population is growing. It means that the population is becoming bigger every time. So the growth is basically when something gets bigger. So the population is growing. Uh, then uh, what else? We can say that, um, well, multiplex cinema, not really, because multiplex, what we mean by that is that there are many um, available, like, um, places, you know, many available seats and, and places where you can go at that cinema then oh yeah tearing down we have this uh this is a uh, um phrasal verb over here tearing down when we say tear down or when we're talking about tearing down it mean it means that we are basically derivando cosas see so tearing down is an action that basically takes us to destroying things so if there was a house or a building and now that building is being torn down or you see that they are tearing it down, it means that there is not going to be there anymore. So it's going to be destroyed, basically. So that's tear down. Uh, then I think this is very easy, you know, our high school. So it means that the high school is the one that is getting destroyed. Uh, and then she says, uh, yeah, soon there will be just malls and parking lots. Now, after this, we get to this one right here. Nowadays, it's actually one of those phrases or words that we will have to use um, to refer to situations present right now. And when we say nowadays, we are talking about specifically that, the present. Like if um, I say in Spanish, hoy en día. 
So that's what we refer to when we use nowadays. Okay, it's basically to say uh, like saying hoy en día. It's a it's a very similar um translation there. So yeah, nowadays, and that's how you are going to use it nowadays. Um, now you can use it in in many situations. For example, um, when you use it at the beginning, it's like you're introducing something that is happening in 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 these days. When you use it at the end of a sentence, when you, for example, say uh, everyone drives nowadays, it means that, um, okay, so nowadays at, at the beginning is like a comment. Nowadays at the end is like, uh, like you're not okay with that, okay? Like you feel angry or anxious about something. Entonces, al principio de una oración cuando utilizamos nowadays es un comentario, algo que simplemente estamos hablando, ¿verdad? Acerca de la situación. Pero cuando utilizamos nowadays al final es como si nos estamos quejando, como si no nos gusta que la situación sea así. Como, por ejemplo, si yo dijera everyone drives nowadays. O sea, como todo mundo maneja hoy en día, ¿verdad? O sea, a mí no me gusta que así sea. So yeah, that would be like the, the difference there between using it at the beginning or at the end of a sentence. Okay, now, the time contrast. Ahora sí, vamos al time contrast. So, when we talk about time contrast, we're going to see that there are some situations in our lives or uh, around us that we can talk about in the past, in the present, and in the future. So, we talk about events that we have already seen. We talk about how those events may have evolved to today. And we can also talk about how those events can continue to change in the future, can continue to evolve in the future. So that is basically what this section refers to. We have, for example, that if you say in the past, a few years ago, not many people lived here, that is referring to a situation that was happening a few years ago. You may say uh, that about what? About uh, six years, 10 years ago? Not many people live where uh, you live. But nowadays, or these days, you see here this other one, these days, these days, it refers to basically the same, estos días, these days, the population is growing so fast. So, the uh, <clears throat> sorry, in the past, there was not too many people living there. Right now, well, the population is growing fast. That means that, more people are living in that area. And in the future, there will be a lot of shopping malls. So if you talk about this, about uh, like, for example, the availability of new stores or new shops, new things, it refers to the continuous growth of the population as well. So more people are going to be living here. Therefore, more shopping malls or more shopping spaces are going to be needed. So that's how we continue on the um on the time contrast thing if i will i were to say something about me a few years ago i didn't even like english these days i can speak english pretty well soon i hope i can start learning a new language okay entonces eso sería verdad es una misma situación tal vez no si o sea siguiendo como el mismo tema pero haciendo un contraste de cómo esa situación o, o esa ese tema ha ido cambiando o podría continuar cambiando o ha cambiado a la fecha. Okay, so the next one. Next we can use is people used to shop at grocery stores. So that's something that people used to do. They used to shop at grocery stores. Um, now, today, people shop at supermarkets. Okay, so not many people nowadays in the U.S. at least uses, um, you know, grocery stores. Even me, I, I, I surprise myself sometimes when I realize that, um, that, yeah, I prefer to go to the supermarket than going to the, to the grocery store. I don't know why. I just don't like going to the grocery store that much because I feel like people at grocery stores are going to charge more for the things uh, that you can get at the supermarket and probably it's the other way around but that's the way I feel I just don't don't like it that much mostly when I have a supermarket kind of close by and then cosa importante mencionar es que estos libros o sea son bastante viejos la información esta es bastante vieja eh, porque ese otro comentario acerca del futuro es algo que pues en aquel entonces según entiendo estos libros son como por ahí de los años 2000 sí 
Entonces, en, en ese momento, el siguiente comentario era como un sueño. Hoy en día es básicamente la realidad más aparente que hay, ¿verdad? Eh, en Estados Unidos, al menos para muchas personas, es así como funciona. Aquí creo que también para algunos, eh, yo honestamente nunca he querido utilizar el, el servicio de pedidos ya para esto, para, para que me traigan, eh, qué sé yo, mis necesidades, mi, mi comida del súper. Eh, si alguno de ustedes lo ha hecho, pues me imagino que ya tendrá una mejor idea si funciona de forma correcta o no. But the comment is, in 20 years, people might buy groceries by computer. And that's what they do now. For example, I have one cousin who lives in, in the U.S. And uh, what they say is that normally on her way home from work, she orders, you know, groceries. She orders things. And when she gets home, everything is just there waiting for her at home. So that's something very common nowadays. People just stop liking going to the supermarket. Um, another thing that has happened is that in many supermarkets, they offer the option that you can buy online and then only pick up the things that you bought. So that's another common practice that they have. You buy your things, and then when, it, when the things are ready, you can come back to the supermarket, and they're going to give you everything that you got, um, you know, online. So, yeah, things that happen nowadays are the, uh, grocery shopping. Now, another time contrast example would be 50 years ago, people walked everywhere. So that's something that people used to do 50 years ago. Nowadays, people drive their cars instead. So in the past, uh, there was a lot of walking. There was a lot of public transport. So not many people had a car. But nowadays, it's like people have falling for using cars. You know, people use their cars to go everywhere. Sometimes I have seen people doing that. Sometimes they just have to go two blocks away. And instead of walking, they just get on their, get in their car and go in the car. And it's like, I mean, I don't understand it sometimes. I would understand it if after you do that, after you go and do that thing two, two blocks away, you're going out. You know, you're going to a farther location. That's understandable. But if you only go that those two blocks and then come back to the same place, it's like, you're just wasting, you know, your, your time, your energy, and your money in at some extent. Now, the last phrase is, in the future, people are going to use cars even more. And we are starting to see that. You know, a few years ago, there were not as many cars available in the country. There was not as much traffic. But nowadays, as more people are turning into using their cars more and more and more, there is going to be more traffic. Okay, now, can I please get one example? Un ejemplo me gustaría que me pudieran dar un tema específico que siga este mismo patrón, sí? El pasado, el presente y el futuro. Can you guys think of one thing that can be work with all of them? Algo que se nos pueda ocurrir que pueda funcionar en todos los casos, o sea, hacer un time contrast, ¿verdad? De lo que pasaba, lo que pasa ahora y lo que creemos que pasará. So let's see, maybe we can hear from Glenda. Do you, do you, can you think of an example, Glenda, of a situation that can be time contrasted? No entendí muy bien. <laughs> Lo que estoy tratando de hacer es uh, hablar acerca de una situación en la cual podamos eh, generar un, un contraste temporal. O sea, algo en lo cual expliquemos cómo funcionaba en el pasado, que es el tema acá, ¿verdad? Que aquí dice, por ejemplo, que hace unos años... Eh, las, esto era así, por ejemplo, hace unos años no vivía mucha gente en este lugar o en estos días, eso ya sería en el presente, la población está creciendo, ¿verdad? Está creciendo muy rápido. Y en el futuro se dice que eh, pronto habrá más centros comerciales, o sea, y los centros comerciales son como un indicador de que la población es bastante grande. Entonces, lo que quiero que hagamos ahorita es escoger un tema, tomar un tema y hacer ese, esa línea temporal, ese contraste temporal que puede haber. O sea, cómo era algo en el pasado, cómo son las cosas ahora y cómo creemos que pueden ser en el futuro. Puede ser acerca del trabajo, puede ser acerca de algo en la familia, pero simplemente que vengamos generando las ideas eh, Así, ¿verdad? En cuanto al tiempo, que tiene que ser una en el pasado, una en el presente y una en el futuro. 
Ok. Me ayuda con las palabras. Yes. Aquí tenemos okay. una de Susana. Susana nos vamos a ver. Uh, este tema está bastante bueno, de hecho. A few years ago, not many people had a cell phone. Sí, eso, con eso empieza Susana. ¿Será que le damos seguida a eso? A few years ago, not many people had a cell phone. Sí. Hace unos años, no, no todo el mundo, no muchas personas tenían un, un teléfono celular. ¿Qué tal ahora? ¿Cuál podría ser la oración para el presente, Glenda? Um, this is days. Uh -huh. The cell phones very intelligent. Mm -hmm. Okay, cell phones. Ahora, aquí solo perdemos un detalle, ¿sí? El detalle es que tenemos que seguir una idea específica. No necesariamente los teléfonos, sino el hecho de que las personas no usaban el teléfono. Vamos a ver, lo voy a modificar un poquito la, la oración que, 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 en la que estábamos pensando. Sería, these days, cell phones are very intelligent. Muy bien, eso está bien. Pero tenemos que incluir a la gente en esto. Entonces vamos a decir, cell phones are very intelligent. And people use them for everything. For everything. So there we go. That will be it. People use them for everything. Now, the last one, what do you think about the future? ¿Qué puede ser acerca del futuro? ¿Qué creemos acerca del futuro? What do you think? Um, let's see. Eh, de Nilsson. ¿Qué le parece a usted? ¿Cómo cree que sea la situación de los teléfonos en el futuro? Si futuro cercano, futuro lejano, cualquiera de los dos. What do you think? What do you think is going to happen with cell phones? Eh, de Nilsson Molina. Uh, hello, teacher. Hello. Uh, maybe in the future we don't use cell phones and electronic instruments, gadgets. Mm -hmm. We might stop using... What? Okay, so in the future, we might stop using cell phones. Yes, and other gadgets. Mm -hmm. Cell phones and other gadgets. And uh, the cars maybe will use fly. Okay. My get. And cars might get to fly. Muy bien. Ok, sí, ahí tenemos entonces. Uh, so, in the future, uh, we might stop using cell phones. Ahora, lo que sí, que we might do that, but we also might replace them with something else. But in the future, we might stop using cell phones and other gadgets and cars might get to fly. Muy bien. Significa entonces que tenemos esperanzas, ¿verdad? De que en el futuro vamos a poder volar con nuestros carros. Bueno, ahora vamos a practicar esta conversación. Queda todavía un par de minutos, así que nos vamos a separar en este momento en los breakout rooms. Eh, no sé si pueden eh, obtener sus capturas. Vamos entonces a practicar esto, si no dejamos esta conversación en pendiente. Y ya, pues básicamente vamos a regresar solo a culminar, ¿verdad? Lo que sería la sesión de hoy. So yeah, uh, let's get divided, let's get into the rooms right now, and let's get to practice. Hola, eh, compartimos. Hello, Susana. Hello. How are you? Ivana will share. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, start, Ivania, please. ¿Quién va a ser Max? Would you like be mad, Susana? Okay. 
Okay. This neighborhood sure has changed. I know a few years ago, not many people live here, but the population is growing so fast these days. Yeah, it seems like there's a construction site on every corner. Remember how we used to buy candy at that little grocery store? Now it's a multiplex cinema. Yeah. And they're, they're, in, they're in town, our high school. They're going to build a shopping mall. Soon there will be just malls and parking lots. That's because everyone has a car. 50 years ago, people walked everywhere. Nowadays, they drive. Uh, you there, Lupita? Uh, Tania. <laughs> uh, this a neighborhood sure has changed. I know. A few years ago, not many people live here. But the population is growing so fast these days. Yeah. It seems like there's a construction seat on every, every corner. Remember how we used to buy candy at that little grocery store? Now it's a multiplex cinema. Yeah. And they are tearing down our high school. They're going to building a shopping mall. Soon there will be huge small and parking lots. That's because everyone has a car. 50 years ago, people walked everywhere. Nowadays, they drive. Finish. Okay. Lo hacemos al revés, Susana. Okay. Um, I'm Tanya. Yes. Uh, this neighborhood sure has changed. I know. A few years ago, not many people live here, but the population is growing so fast these days. Yeah. It seems like there's a construction site on every corner. Remember how we used to buy candy at the little grocery store? Now it's a multiplex cinema. Yeah, and they're tearing down our high school. They're going to build a shopping mall. Soon there will be just malls and parking lots. That's because everyone has a car. 50 years ago, people walked everywhere. Nowadays, they drive. Okay. This neighborhood sure has changed. Lupita. I know, a few years ago, not many people lived here, but the population is growing so fast this day. Yeah, it seems like there's construction site on every corner. Remember, all oh, we used to buy candy at that little grocery store, not is a multiplex cinema. Yeah, and they are tearing down our high school. They are going to build shopping mall. Okay, so as per usual, time flies sometimes. And uh, yeah, this time around, I feel like I just started the class and it's time to end it. 
Uh, but it was fun. It was great to see that you guys were practicing a lot. And also, well, it's also advisable that you continue to do so. Um, I just want to congratulate you for the good work that you are doing. And uh, thank you very much for it. So for now, all I have to do is thank you guys for your attention and participation in this afternoon's class. I hope I'll see you tomorrow. I hope we'll continue working and continue learning. And I just hope everything goes great during the rest of your day. So thank you very much and uh, see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Okay, see you all. See you everyone.